Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The fourth topic in chapter six, components of fitness. As always, we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your exam. And today you need to be able to recognize the components of health related and skill related fitness and to explain the links of these components to performance of sports and physical activities. In topic 6.2, we learned that fitness can be defined as the ability to cope with the demands of the environment. Environmental demands vary for all of us, but are particularly high for elite athletes who require a specific set of finely tuned attributes if they're to perform at the highest level. These physical attributes are known as the components of fitness, and athletes rely on different components depending on the nature and requirements of their sport. For example, weightlifters need strength to be successful, while marathon runners rely on endurance or stamina so that they can maintain pace over long durations. There are 10 components you need to know and two separate categories into which they can be sorted. Health-related components are those that relate directly to our health and meeting the demands of everyday life. The six health-related components are cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, flexibility, strength, speed, and power. The remaining four are skill-related components that relate to the skills and abilities needed to perform well in sporting situations. They are agility, balance, coordination and reaction time. We'll begin by defining each of the health-related components in order and explaining their relevance to different physical activities. Cardiovascular endurance is otherwise known as stamina and can be defined as the ability to exercise the body for long periods of time without tiring. To achieve this, the heart, lungs and blood must work efficiently to deliver oxygen to the working muscles so that energy can be produced via aerobic respiration. Activities that require plenty of stamina include marathon running, triathlons, road cycling and high duration team sports such as football. Muscular endurance is the ability of your muscles to work continuously without getting tired, where force production is maintained over sustained periods of time. Physical activities that rely on muscular endurance include those that use the same muscle groups repeatedly, such as rowing, cycling and rock climbing. Flexibility is our third component and can be defined as the range of movement possible around a joint. It relies on the elasticity of muscles, tendons and ligaments and is particularly important for swimmers performing the butterfly stroke, gymnastic actions such as the splits and when throwing a high side kick in taekwondo. Next we have strength which is the ability to exert the maximum amount of force in one go. Static strength involves isometric muscular contractions and can be seen when scrummaging in rugby or holding the barbell during an Olympic lift. Dynamic strength, on the other hand, involves isotonic contractions and is required by gymnasts performing a ring routine or when a striker attempts to hold off their marker in football. Our fifth component is speed or the ability to perform a movement quickly. Speed is important for sprinters who need to cover a set distance in as short a period of time as possible, but can also be seen when pitching in baseball, releasing a javelin or serving in tennis. Our final health related component is power or the ability to perform strength exercises at speed. Discus throwers require strength to move the resistance of the discus, but must do so quickly or explosively if a good distance is to be achieved. Power is also essential for explosive actions such as dunking in basketball or throwing a punch in boxing. Now we only need to cover the four skill related components of fitness and we'll take a look at agility first. Agility is the ability to change the body position quickly under control and is important for physical activities that rely on changing direction at speed. Dribbling in football is a great example of agility in action as players need to make quick directional changes to evade defenders whilst maintaining ball control throughout. Number two is balance, which can be defined as being able to maintain a position either static or dynamic. Static or stationary balance is important for gymnasts when holding a handstand, while dynamic or moving balance is required when volleying in football or racing a slalom course in skiing. A lack of balance here would make it extremely difficult for the skier to maintain control and could lead to a fall or loss of direction. Coordination is the ability to use two or more body parts at the same time and is essential for most fundamental skills. For example, a table tennis player uses their feet for balance and their arms, hands and eyes to ensure the ball connects with the center of the bat. Our final component for today is reaction time or the time it takes to respond to a stimulus. 
Reaction time is particularly important when responding to the starter pistol or buzzer at the start of a sprint or swimming race, but is also required for team games when a performer only has a very short period of time to react. Returning a fast serve in tennis or taking a sharp catch in cricket are great examples of reaction time in action. Well done, you've just covered everything you need to know on topic 6.4 the components of fitness. Take some time now to revise each of the 10 components and come back next time for lesson five on fitness testing. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you in the next one.